Yo, what's up, Reefers? Queen of Reef here. So I want to talk today about something that has been bothering me for a long time now, okay? Saltwater aquariums are never approached from an angle of design. You know, we all want a beautiful reef tank that is aesthetically pleasing. We all want a sexy reef tank. So why don't we ever talk about this? You know, there are a million and one resources about how to physically construct your aquascape, but we never talk about the aesthetic aesthetics, the design of what makes these aquascapes great looking. We've never really evolved past this conversation. And you know what, my dear reefers, right now I think it is time. I think it is time to have this discussion. I know we oftentimes get kind of a bit overwhelmed with, you know, trying to make sure that our reef tanks are set up for long-term success, that they are thriving, that they are healthy, that we may sometimes neglect some of these things. Things, but it's okay because we are now going to have this conversation. How can we make our reef tanks look more aesthetically pleasing? How can we make our reef tanks look more harmonious and look balanced to the eye? In this aquascaping and coral placement 2.0 series, I'm going to go through the five major guiding principles of design and how you can apply those principles to your reef tank. I've touched on a few of these principles in recent videos where I talked about how strategically placing your corals can make them look artificially brighter and how using depth in the Fibonacci sequence can make your aquascape look better to the eye. However, I feel that we need to go more in depth and focus on the theory behind these principles individually and the reason why they can make your reef tank look beautiful. These five principles are the basic components of what makes any kind of design aesthetically pleasing. They are the foundation rules, architects, graphic designers, interior designers, and so on and so forth rely upon to make their masterpiece. But just like designers, the creativity and logistics of how you implement these rules is up to you. Because these principles are just a viewpoint or, you know, a way of perceiving your aquarium's design, the logistics of if and how you can incorporate them is up to your discretion. However, as a disclaimer, never sacrifice the health of your aquarium for the sake of tank design. Your livestock's health, needs, growth patterns, and aggressivity always, always comes first. These are not hardline rules that I'm about to share with with you and they may not always be viable in reality because of those considerations you need to make. But with that being said, because these concepts are abstract, there are endless ways that they can be incorporated. My goal with this video series is just to simply apply these principles of design in a way that hopefully inspires you guys when you're forming your decisions and judgments based on the practical factors of your tank. And in part one of this series, we're going to talk about balance. Have you ever looked at your aquascape and think it's nice, but something about it just feels off or incomplete even? You may be subconsciously responding to a lack of balance in the structure. A balanced aquascape just feels right. It feels visually stable and aesthetically pleasing. While some components of the rock structure may be focal points and attract your eye, no one area of the aquascape draws your eye so much that you can't see other areas. Balancing an aquascape involves arranging both rock and negative space in a way that no one area area of the aquascape overpowers other areas. Each component of the aquascape works together and fits together as a seamless whole. Balance is easy to understand outside of the reefing world because we experience it all of the time. When something is unbalanced, it falls over. Just like a seesaw with one person on one side and another person on the other. If the two people on either side were about the same size, they can easily balance on the seesaw. This seesaw here is balanced. The two people here are equally distant from the seesaw center. If the person on the left makes the seesaw rotate counterclockwise, the person on the right makes the rotate counterclockwise by an equal amount. But if one person on the seesaw was a lot bigger, the balance would be thrown off completely. See how this picture here just doesn't feel right? We know the person on the left isn't big enough to balance the person on the right. However, if the larger person slid towards the center, then the seesaw would be balanced. Visual balance is just like this. Physical weight is just replaced by visual weight. Rather than the actual weight of an object, visual weight is how much attention an object draws to it in comparison to other objects. 
objects. Visual weight can be altered by size, color, contrast, or the density of an object. For example, a larger square draws more attention to the eye than a smaller square. A square that is highly contrasted draws your attention more than one that is not. A bolder or brighter colored square draws more attention than a pale or dull colored square. And a square like the one on the right draws your eye more because of its perceived density using negative space. Now the goal of creating balance then is to make sure that there is an even distribution of visual weight, either through size, color, contrast, or density. In designing our aquascape, this would mean that we want to make sure that one area of the rock work doesn't get too visually heavy on one side. To make sure that the rock structure is balanced, we must strategically use size and density or negative space in our favor. There are three ways that we can approach achieving a balanced aquascape. The most common way is to create balance over two sides of an invisible axis, either vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. This axis is the visual direction of your design. In terms of aquascaping, each rock structure must have at least one axis. Whether it's vertically balanced, horizontally balanced, diagonally balanced, whereas multiple axes does not matter, but it must have at least one. In the event that you have multiple rock structures in your tank, you need to assess both the balance of each individual rock structure on its own, and then how the two rock structures balance against each other when placed in the tank. So say I have this rock structure here that is diagonally balanced, and then this rock structure that is horizontally balanced. When placed together, they must also be balanced against each other. In this case, they're balanced diagonally. Are you still with me, guys? Okay, good, because we're going to dive in even deeper. There are also three three types of balance that you can create. Symmetrical balance, asymmetrical balance, and radial balance. Symmetrical balance is commonly seen around us, like on butterflies, human faces, or those little snowflake things that we used to cut out as kids. Symmetrical balance is created by placing objects that are the same visual weight and the same kind of visual weight on each side of an axis. Each of the subject on one side corresponds to the same visual weight on the other side. Just like this aquascape where the rock formations mirror each other across a horizontal axis. Try not to overuse symmetry when designing an aquascape though. Too much symmetrical balance can easily become a bit dry and a bit boring. While incorporating some symmetrical elements may make sense, real reefs in nature are never truly symmetrical, so keep that in mind when designing your aquascape. Asymmetrical balance is commonly seen around us as well, like in trees or natural rock formations. Like symmetry, it is also balanced on both sides of the axis. However, asymmetrical balance takes takes into account the total visual weight of the objects rather than one object directly corresponding with another on the other side of the center. Take the seesaw example from earlier. Asymmetrical balance would be like a man sitting on one side of the seesaw while five small children sit on the other side. The seesaw still balances, but it takes five small children-sized objects to equal one of the man-sized objects. Asymmetrical balance makes things dynamic and lively. In aquascaping, it's the best technique of balance to incorporate because it mimics the randomness of nature, just like a real life reef. Lastly, radial balance is when elements appear to radiate from a central focal point. This can be used if you want eyes to be drawn to the center of your design. So if you're one of those central mound aquascaping types, radial balance is the key for you. When creating radial balance, it's tempting to just place rocks equidistant from the center, but there are also other ways to create balance in these kind of scapes. One way is to place the visually heavier rock structure closer to the center while placing a visually lighter rock structure at a distance. As long as if the line, if it were possible to draw a line between them, passes directly through the center point. The structure still remains balanced this way because just like the seesaw analogy, physics tells us that a heavier object closer to the center of the seesaw can be balanced by a lighter object at a distance. These three methods of balance can be used in combination with each other to create contrast in certain areas of your aquascape, like balancing symmetrical forms in an asymmetric way or, or balancing asymmetrical forms symmetrically. You can break up a symmetrical aquascape with a random feature to add a certain flair, or you can contrast symmetry and asymmetry to make certain areas get more attention. It's all up to your creativity. So why use this method of balance? Well, when things are balanced in an aquascape, harmony is created. Balance is important to create a sense of unity in your overall aquascape design. When designing a scape layout, take a step back and ask yourself if the overall structure feels balanced. If one area draws too much attention, experiment with size, contrast, or negative space to help redistribute that visual weight. So let's take a look at some real life examples, shall we?
that's how you create visual balance in your aquascape, folks. No, I didn't make this concept up. All of the principles mentioned in this reef tank design series are all rooted in the way humans perceive things around us. Just remember that these concepts aren't hard and fast rules. There's no one right way to create balance in an aquascape, and two aquascapes will never do it in the same way. Also, none of these design principles have to be followed. However, they do help significantly when judging the aesthetic design and overall feel of your aquascape. I know that this video just covers aquascaping, but let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see how this concept of balance applies to coral placement and livestock in general. We're going to change the saltwater game, y'all. Even freshwater planted tank lovers are going to want a reef now. Just saying. It has come to my attention that I seriously butchered last week's video. <laughs> I guess it's not called plumber's tape, but actually it's called Teflon tape. Hey, you know, if it's used for plumbing, I was close enough, right? And to make matters worse, we also placed the plumber's tape, ahem, Teflon tape, as you guys call it, incorrectly. I guess I should just stick to reef tank design topics, huh? And this is by far the best advice I've ever seen for plumbing an aquarium. I'll definitely keep that in mind for next time. Also, a platform ladder is most definitely appropriate. You know, it's not easy being vertically challenged. You know, you gotta hand it to short people like me because we can't reach it.